Alright, so this is gonna be the raw me reading the raw patch notes. Uh, this is gonna take a while. I'm not gonna read every word, but yeah. So, Challenge League. Forbidden Sightum is a roguelike that takes place. Yeah, I got there for pretty fast, so. I got f I was five head on this one. Helix has been nerfed, I'm pretty sure, because it's really strong mechanically. Too strong at all stages of the game. I mean, Helix maybe is, but it's clunky to play, so... 100% effectiveness, holy fuck, the nerf! 100% less... What the hell?! This is... This is way too much. The Spectral Elix has like flat damage on it. Spectral Elix. No. It doesn't. Yeah, your your build it's not there, that's not true. I mean, your, your build, yeah, it's there because you were going for low, lower damage and like uber tanky. So now you won't have enough damage, I'm pretty sure. So yeah, the way you, you do the character is pretty much dead, yeah. I feel like 100% is quite a big nerf. I'm actually going to talk about that in my video. I don't care about conduit because spells and spells are already strong, but yeah. So far, Bone Shatter doesn't seem to have been touched, so I'm happy. Yeah, 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 because of the way you, you were building that, yeah, that's true. Uh, that seems a bit rough. They could have, like, maybe 50% at level 20 would have been, I mean, already a nerf, so start with that, I don't know. No, no problem, man. But I'm not gonna spoil anything now. New content and features. Added the new optional game mode, rootless, we don't give a shite for that. Strength, int, gem, frozen legion. So strength and int, gem. It's a spell, but it, it looks melee. Yeah, you need like melee weapons. Like you, well, not you need, but you can do it with maces and axes. I don't believe I'm gonna play something. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read that. Then I'm gonna probably go, go munch, and then put my reaction on YouTube, and then record a video about the patch notes. And if I have time, I'm gonna start looking into builds. I was planning on doing more than one, but I don't believe melee has been buffed. I wanted to go back to lacerate bleed lad, but I don't think they changed anything for it to be good enough. So I'm gonna tinker with my bone shatter build and release the build once POB is, has been upgraded. All right, Frozen Legion, that looks decent. Organic Fisher. I mean, it's a new way to build Slam, so why not? Uh, Cursed Ground. Yeah, they showed that. Hex Bloom. Hexes from your supported skills are transferred to all enemies within a certain distance when X enemy dies. Okay, it's like a prolif. Eight new Vol Skill Gems. Cleave, Flick a Strike, Blade Flurry, Venom Gyre. Mo Vol Molten Strike, interesting. Because I like Molten Strike. Wonder what it does. Caustic Arrow, Volcanic Fisher, and Vol Smite. Okay. But Vol Cleave is interesting. For mapping, at least. Unless you can use the Flask that summons Worms or even Vol Breach. So you gain shit, but you need rare enemies, so probably not. Fracturing Orb is pretty dope. I'm gonna open up my notepad. 
I still I can still look at chat so I hate windows I don't know about you guys but my notepad is always bugged it opens up like bigger than my monitor always all right I don't need to see my face so that's fine so Val Molten Strike interesting Then fracturing orb, and it's four modifiers, so it's not that bad. You're a Mac user, so yeah. I if it was not for Path of Exile in streaming, I would be just running Linux like I was before. At least when with Linux, you decide when you update your shit what you want to update. There's basically no viruses. It's lighter. It's just better. But running games that have not been compiled for Linux is it's a hit or, it's hit or miss. So in Path of Exile it's harder to run. So that's why I use Linux, uh, not Linux, but Windows. Uh, fracturing shards, yeah, that's fine. Fifteen new uniques, ten div cards. I don't think we've seen them all. They're probably gonna reveal more during the week. Atlas memories around domination and bestiary. The bestiary one is amazing. Like re-rolling your watcher's eyes. I mean, you get a shitty one, you re-roll it, and you can get possibly something good. I mean, it's free instead of just not letting in let, letting the watcher's eyes sit in your stash. It's just you can maybe do something with it. So it's a good idea. And what was the other one? There was the one with the watcher's eyes. They're probably gonna say it later anyway. Calendar Stutch Unique has been added to the core drop pool. So nobody saw it, nobody's gonna see it either. Grand and exceptional Eldritch Ickers have received new art, so they are more distinguishable. That's not a bad idea. Continue to incrementally improve the sound, heart, effects, and environment. Maven Witness Maps bosses now have a chance to drop an Awakened Gem, that's good, they've already talked about that. Following maps have been added back to the Atlas. Academy, Bazaar, Burial Chambers, Cage, Cage is good to farm 6 link card and it's a nice layout. I like Channel. City, Squ City Square is great too. Courthouse, Courtyard, Coves, Estuary, Forbidden Woods, Graveyard. Nah, his cemetery is good. Toxic Sewer is not a bad layout as well. It's not my favorite, but it's it's okay. Iceberg is nice, especially like the first part of the map. It's so packed with monsters, so I'm happy to see this one back. Infested Valley, I like. Every Temple, Lookout is okay. Mineral Pool, Primordial Blocks, I hate with a passion, but you can get the Avenger card to get Mjolnir, which I have there on the shelf. So maybe, and there's another good card, I believe, in this map. Mesa is really nice. One of my favorite. Sepulcher, Shipyard, Spider Lair, Sunken City, Toxic Sewer, and Volcano. Arena. Arid Lake is a nice one, but they add good one. They have to remove good one. Armory, Barrows. Uh, Cells has the six link card as well as Cage and Pen, so we got Cage, so we're good. Belfry, Bramble Valley, oh no, no more Bramble Valley. Oh, they removed Cells. So I was getting more six link card in Cells than in Pen or Cage. So the layout sucks, but just for this card, I mean. I'm a little bit sad. Chateau, dig, excavation, fungal hollow. Jungle Valley, oh, that was a good one. Lava Chamber, Marshes, Mud Geyser, Park. Park has been there for ages, so I don't mind. It's a good layout. The bus sucks. but Pen is good. Racecourse is good. Rampart. Holy fuck. We're losing a lot. Do we still have Tropical Island? Because it's not removed. And it hasn't been added. Maybe it's just not there. 
Rampart. We still have a toll. So a toll. We still have Mesa. So these are probably be my go-to maps. Stagnation, Summit. And we still have Dry Sea. Dry Sea is good. Yeah, Dry Sea for an alteration card. The layout is not that bad. So I mean we still have good maps, that's fine. Map tiers and locations have been shuffled, sure. Some of the map bosses you are required to defeat to upgrade your Pantheon have changed, yeah. Crafting recipes that were previously unlocked in maps that have been removed from the Atlas, sure. Some div cars and have found new homes. Bijou. Buried treasure. Grotto map. Gemlin Queen. Estate, Bear Woman, Endurance, Mind's Eye, Mountain, The Nurse and Carcass, Offering, Wolf Wolverine. I don't know most of these cards by name, so. The Transformation, Divination card, they are noting the win, Mad King. Okay, so basically, the, if you want to farm one, it's probably going to be on the wiki anyway, because it's written here, people are going to update that. Alright, monster mods and arc nemesis. Arc nemesis monsters mods each had added a number of stats and buffs to monsters, causing them to feel overwhelming and confusing, especially when multiple mods were present on the same monster solution. Monster mods now only do one specific thing. Right, so they've talked about that earlier. Like Magma Barrier Arc Nemesis mod did a whole lot of stuff. It started by putting a magma barrier around the monster. It converted some of the monster's fist damage to fire, added some extra fire damage on top, granted fire resist, and gave fizz reduction as well, because why not? And they were spawning volatile flame bloods. So, it's gonna be manageable. I mean, it was, like, endgame, it was kind of manageable, except for beasts and essence, especially essences. Now, hopefully I can still do a lot of essences. I mean, for melee, because spellcaster, you can just off screen them, most likely. So, keyworded to me, thematic monster and mod names gave an impression of the overall effect of the mod on the monster, but did not explain exactly what they were granted. Yeah, I didn't know basically 90% of what the mods were doing. I just knew the names of a few mods that I was not liking, that I was hating, and that's it. So they've talked about that. I'm not sure I want to read every single line. My kids are screaming and my daughter just came back from school. That's why. All right. Interesting and challenging emerging behavior. Yeah. Arc Nemesis rewards were set up. Okay, they talked about that. Like no more calling needed. Eldritch authors. They have... We had a manifesto on that, but there might be additional information. They were too rewarding. But I mean, we were never witnessing map bosses once we we had done it first, like once. So yeah, they were more rewarding than that. So. It removed some reward types. It, they're more specific. So yeah, I I have a video about that on, on the manifesto. So. Don't think I should be reading all that, but the scarabs that will drop and have a 3 to 1 recipe, this, this is just great. It's probably like the best thing in there. In there. Uh, what do you mean, not streams of ex... Oh no, they're, they're not screaming of excitement for the game, they're too young. I wish they were, but... Like, my middle daughter had her birthday... I mean, it's in three days, but we celebrated it like four or five days ago because my wife works this weekend. So they, she had gifts and now everybody wants to play with the gifts and all. So they all want to use every gift at the same time. Like, that's why they're kind of screaming. It's manageable, though. The first day, though, they were literally focusing and everyone was doing everything. That was funny. But that's probably why they're screaming. Okay. Players currently have an incentive to skip past our regular map monsters. I never felt that because I just all can go. I don't uber juice maps and 
I never did that for altars either. I was just using them as they were popping, so. I didn't even think this was an issue. So, alright. Uh, Eldritch Influence added a huge amount of extra monsters. Yeah, and that was really nice for XP and loot. I really hope this is... This doesn't feel too bad. Like, the, I mean, when you get a 60 packs per map, you're gonna be fine with 20. Uh, we're gonna have to wait and see. Route of the Cosmos. Yeah, it's just basically repeating what they were already seeing in the previous manifestos. Atlas 3. Okay, so this is new. It creates pressure to only run pinnacle boss content when you respect into Atlas passive. That is so true. So to maximize your rewards, hoarding as much of a given type of content as you can before running it and specking back out of it. We've removed Atlas passives that increase the amount of rewards from limited contents such as Shaper, Elder, Searing Exarch, and Eater of Wars, and the Maven. The purpose of this is such that you would be able to engage with this content at any time, which is fine because I don't like running the same content over and over and over again. Like, I don't like doing 20 Elders in a row. I can do a couple and then I'm bored. I want to do something else and come back later to it. So, For me, this is a great change. Uh, so we still don't know yet, but I can't wait to test it. I'm not sure if I'm going to make a video about that. It depends on the changes, but I might do one like what I plan on using at the start. That could be interesting. Jewels and aim mitigation. Again, I got a video on that, but we've got some numbers. Five new suffix modifiers on regular jewels. So it reduced effect of chill, shock, poison, bleed... And reduce ignite duration effect of chill on you. Oh, these are corruption. So you can get that as a corruption on top. And I really like the reduced effect. Because you don't need to be immune if you're if you're like 90% immune. Maybe corrupted blood for Cyrus, but I mean if you only feel like 98, 95% of chill, you practically won't be slowed, so... I mean, it's single... Single ailment, though. So, I'm not sure. I usually get chill immune on boots, freeze immune with the Pantheon. So, I might do something with poison, because I lack Chaos Res most of the time. Or Ignite. Some Ignites are strong, so we'll see. That can be interesting. And now for Abyssal Jewels, this is Avoidance, for Ignite, Shock, Poison, Bleed, up to 50% if it's perfectly roll. So technically, you could get one Jewel with 50% Ignite Immune, there's a Life Wheel on the tree that gives you 20 ailment. Avoidance, so you're already at 70, so you don't have to have two perfect jewels, and you can probably get some at other places. So it's gonna help for sure. I might look into like Ignite or Poison. Maybe put this or this. It depends on how my jewel ro my, my jewels roll, but I, I like the numbers I'm seeing right now. I just hope it doesn't dilute the mod pool too much. Because it's it's just five new suffix, so it's not gonna dilute the prefixes. Might not be that bad. We'll see. Reduced effect of cursors, jewel suffix modifiers now have values of up to 30%. 15% reduced effect of chill and shock. It can no longer roll, but we have better ones, so okay. Stun and block recovery, I don't give a shit. Many unique jewels are not exciting to find. We don't have a list of jewels or just a few examples, that sucks. Unless I have some in the press kit. Endgame improvement, relic, I don't believe I do. Got a few new uniques, but not 
Jewel, so all right. So they've talked about that. They're removing a lot of unique jewels that were useless. They're changing a few, making new ones, so. And they're keeping some that are useful. Some are you can only get through corruption. And one, I believe, is through render recipe, so for enabling build for golem, I believe. Uh, the avail availability of existing unique jewels has been reviewed. Yeah, okay, no more. So fewer replicas version means you're potentially going to get better replica items from heisting. I really wish like repli replica countries efficiency is still in the game in some way though. Inspired learning. Intuitive leap. Corruption. I don't believe I'm gonna know any of these names for jewels because I don't really use unique jewels. Replica Primordial Might and Reckless Defense. Okay. New vendor recipes for Dead Reckoning and Less Misery, Spirit God, Combat Focus, Happy Hunting. All right. Ancient orbs and the altar of sacrifice in the temple of Azoatl can no longer be used on unique jewels, flasks, or maps. Okay. Beast cherry recipe that creates a unique jewel has been changed. It now creates a rare talisman. Yeah, I saw that. When this played rootless, that's probably better actually, especially for early game. If you can get that recipe early, you can be lucky. We also rebalanced some unique jewels and compensated for the loss of the specific jewels in the form of new modifiers or skill changes. Added Eternal Labyrinth Helmet enchantments for Spark and Ethereal knives that cause projectiles to fire in a circle. Oh, instead of jewels. Ah, isn't it a nerf? Because before, they were probably getting a damage one, right? Frostblades now has 110 effectiveness of added damage up to 225, so Frostblades got buffed. No longer has 0 to 19 increased projectile speed, quality no longer provides increased damage. I'm confused, is it buffed or not? Quality of Divergence, okay, I don't play minions, Spirit Guards... Pure talent, unique jewel, provides melee skills, I have 20% increased AoE. Cleave. When your passive skill tree connects to the Marauder's starting location. Existing version of this unique can be updated. Two new prefix modifiers that can roll on jewels. Increased mana reservation efficiency of skills, which is good, and increased class duration effect. Okay. That's kind of cool. If you get like four or five jewels, you can get like, let's say four jewels, you can get up to 12, like 8 to 12 percent, which means you might not need an essence of loading to craft your helmet or the Eldritch Implicit. So if it's a build that uses a lot of jewels, then that can be great, probably hard to, to roll, but yeah. Our goal is that finding unique jewel. Many unique jewels are not currently unique jewels. Are going to be offered as quest reward. Rare weapons. Okay, what's the king's feast? Is it a quest I usually do? Utula. Okay, so I might kill Utula this league. I was usually skipping it. Wings of Vaziri, okay, instead you're not offered a choice of rare, okay. I usually do it because I always find it on the way to get the trial in Yugul, so sure. Six ground in Act 3. You get a book of regret. Okay, that sucks. They could have added something. 
curses. Yeah, they talked about that. Two new masteries have taken their place. The first provides you take 40% reduced extra damage from critical strikes by cursed enemies. Okay. With the second provides recover 1% of life when you curse a non-cursed enemy. And re... What? Does it stack? Like, let's say you curse a whole pack of 10 monsters. Do you recover 10% life? Shit, with curse on hit? That can be pretty good for survivability. All right, I'm adding that to the notes. Existing curse passive skills have been fully reworked. There are now six curse clusters on the passive three. The Vampirism cluster has moved location on Vampirism. Is that something I was using? No, it was not. All right. More accessible to the witch. Whisper of Doom, notable passive, continues to give. You can apply an additional curse. It now has a much larger selection of small passive skills leading to this notable. Okay, with Blasphemy, that's good. Malicious and the notable passive now gives plus two. Okay. Refresh duration of Ignite, Shield, and Shock on non cursed enemies. You curse, and 100% chance to remove. Elemental elements when you cast a curse spell. Last ride, notable passive. Curse enemy you kill or destroyed. Okay. And supervise enemies curse by you have 50% reduced life regen rate. Okay. Scattering a rude notable. It, these are not things I know because I don't play spells and curse builds, so. But it's still good. 20% increase mana reservation of curse story. Yeah, we we saw that, right? Quality on the diversion is blah. I'm gonna skip that. Yeah, they talked about that. Now they're going into more specifics. Cosprey's will unique armor now has more evasion. Always poison on hit against cursed enemies. Cool. Plus 31 to 53 to Chaos Res. Amazing. Okay. Cosprey's Will has been bought. The Heal for Ben Trickery Unique Helmet. No fucking clue what it is. Yeah, stop talking about X's. Okay, scaling rate of X's and. Curse on hit modifiers. Mm hmm. Punishment. Ellie weakness. Okay, they nerfed Ellie weakness, but our curses are more effective against bosses. So we're gonna be weaker, slightly weaker against packs, but you most likely one shot the packs anyway, so I don't think it matter. But it's gonna be stronger against bosses. Okay. Slightly less duration, but okay, vulnerability. Wow, for 20 levels. You gain three whole seconds. Curse effect. Yeah, they remove curse effect. Eternal Labyrinth, Helmet, Enchant, for Bane. I don't really care about curse effect.
Yeah. Cluster drills, I, I've never used them, so it doesn't doesn't matter if I read that or not, because I won't know. Yeah, I don't. I hope they, they they give something back to the occultist. Yeah, it's a big nerve to occultist. Yeah, I don't like nerves, but oh well. Twenty nine percent less damage. Fifteen percent less action speed up to twenty nine. That's way better. Yeah, but they don't take damage faster from bleed anymore. Uh, thirty nine percent increased physical damage. So, what's poacher mark? Poacher's mark gives life on hit, mana on hit, and minus twenty percent fizz damage reduction, and has flat fizz. So it's probably still stronger. But it's single enemy, so we could technically use vulnerability for mapping, like with curse on hit. Oh no, not curse on hit. Because it's gonna break our mark unless we have more than one curse. And for bosses we could use poacher's poacher's mark or assassin's mark like we did. So I'm gonna think about that. End game unique weapons. Now we're talking. Xeris disfavor now drops for normal Xeris, so I don't think it's gonna be that strong. I'm gonna look. Xeris disfavor. No longer has plus two to level of socketed support gems. 310 to 390. Okay, like 120 flat damage more, plus 10 to weapon range. Imagine playing Cleave with a Xeris Disfavor. We're gonna one shot Innocence in Act 1. We're gonna have so much reach. New version of this unit now has a plus 30 to quality of socketed support gems. Okay, that's interesting for alternate quality thing. If I get it an Ezri disfavor, I might do a cleave build with that. Cause it's gonna be stronger, right? I'm gonna try to calculate deep difference. Like now, let's say we get mid row like three fifteen. How do we calculate that? So, 372.5 times attack speed, let's say 130. So it was like 484, 485 deeps before. Now, if I take mid row, it's like 100 more, basically. So, 415. 415 to 540. 620 deeps, it's still weak. But we get the increase in quality and the range, it's still a weak weapon compared to rare weapons, but it's usable, I believe. All right. Beno's kitchen knife. 
Okay, got a huge buff in Fizz Damage. Bloodseeker, Unique Claw. Okay. Got buffed. Alright. Divinarius, Unique Dagger. Spell Damage. Still a buff. Okay. Essential Sengus, Unique Claw. Don't know what that is. The Kingmaker, oh, Kingmaker, 300 to 360% damage. It's like 60% increased damage, or 50%. No, it's like 60% for the min damage, but like 40%. So let's say 50% increased damage. So you get a free melee splash with Kitava's Feast. Lionized Glare, we saw. Meroe, Yerki, Unique Mace. Okay. The Savior, Unique Sword. Mattel was making builds with the Savior all the time. I hope it's not even more rare, because I've never seen one. Like, it's three times the damage effectiveness. Right? So it's gonna have like decent deeps with the clothes. Okay. Savior. If I get a savior, I'm gonna have to make a build with that too. Soul Taker, we saw it, it's better. No longer replica Soul Taker. Star Forge got buffed. Varun Astra got buffed as well. I like this because you can take any nose on the tree to increase its damage because it counts as all the one ended melee weapons. And you can min max like use Bone Shatter and Night Blade, I believe. Can you? Mm, I don't think you can. I tried to do that, but you can't. But you can use a claw skill. With Nightblade on it, I think. Just not mixing a skill that can't use Nightblade normally. Void Forge, no, no longer increased Fizz. 700% of Fizz damage as extra damage instead of 300%. Okay. Nice buffs. Mitigating Monster Life Regen. Rarely a significant issue for players. But in cases where it does present an obstacle, there are a few solutions available to deal with it. Solution. Introduce some new sources to mitigate monster life regen that are able to be accessed easily. Increase life recovery from flask use when on low life is now found on the base of Rislata. <laughs> Greater solar Rislata and the end of our enemies you hit recently have 50% reduced life regen. Okay, to like fight the rejuve bosses in consecrated grounds. Okay. Strike skills and additional enemies. That's interesting to me. Most strike melee skills are currently reliant on ways to strike extra targets and or deal splash damage in order to compete with other builds where clearing groups of enemies. Add melee splash access to the passive skill tree and move the single additional strike there to be the attack to the attack mastery instead of the specific node. I have splashed damage already with bone shatter. Not sure I like that. The tribal fury. Let's try no, not tribal mole. Tribal fury. Strike skills target an additional enemy. Okay. That sucks. I might not take that anymore. But I still need the other mastery thing. The two small passives in the Tribal Flurry cluster now. Okay. They've been removed. Strike skills target one additional nearby enemy. Oh, they removed that. 
I was always thinking that. No! Okay. Because the splash damage thing is useless for Bone Shatter. But this is nice. So we're gonna have to be closer. But is this gonna be that big of a deal though? I'm gonna have to do some of this thing without this node. We might save some points on the treater. That sucks. All right. Bone Shatter is still fine though. It's just it was a quality of life feature. Pious Path. The recovery provided by the consecrated ground you create causes life regen to also recover energy shield. Significant on its own, so having 50% increase effect on consecrated ground is overboard. Okay, a slight nerf to Inquisitor, so they're gonna have less regen. So, okay. Righteous Fire people won't be happy. I, I read that at the beginning for Captain. So, Elix got butchered. Like 100% less effectiveness at gem level 20. And they nerfed Lightning Conduit. But it's still gonna be pretty strong. I mean, yeah, it's a big nerf though. But I'm pretty sure it's gonna be a strong skill still. Lightning Strike! Lightning Strike is currently overperforming in comparison to other skills. It's very good at both clearing and dealing single target damage. We've changed the number of additional projectiles fired by Lightning Strike. It now requires more investment. Yeah, but we don't give a shit about that. As long as it's as good for bossing, it's fine. Shock enemies. Ah, I believe it's still gonna be fine. That was not the problem. Okay. I don't I don't feel like clearing is that big of a deal in the game. Lightning strike takes a while to come online, so you usually use Helix or something else before, but once you have gear, it's gonna be fine, I'm pretty sure. Divergent second wind. The life regen on skill used provided by Divergent Second Wind support as an irreconcilable bug. Wow, that was hard to read. With a few other stats that interact with life regen. We've replaced the stat on Divergent Second Wind with Generate Life Recovery instead of Life Regen. Okay, Onslaught. Historically, Onslaught itself has never been a buff and cannot be scaled by modifiers to buff effect as its only effect is you have Onslaught, which isn't very sensible. Onslaught is not a buff, so that is a buff. And modifiers to buff effect now apply to Onslaught. This includes flask effect modifiers when Onslaught is provided through flask. As such, flask effect modifiers are able to roll on silver flasks. Okay. That means it's making Mandrel Flames stronger, because now this counts as a buff. So that's good. Withering Step could be used to keep a, a far stronger elusive effect on average, especially in combination with the Nightblade support. Oh, there we go. Normally, you have to wait for elusive to gradually lose effectiveness and fall off before you can gain elusive again. But with Withering Step, you could replace the existing elusive buff with that of Withering Steps and then use any skill to lose elusive again. Withering Step can no longer be used while already elusive. Okay. I'm not sure how big of a deal that is, but okay. Ancestor Totem. Added a new Totem Mastery that provides Ancestor Totem buff effects linger for 3 seconds, which replaces the 50% increase Totem replacement. Okay. But we need to spec into totems for that. And I don't think I'm gonna bother with that. 
because you need to spec into three, like three, four, five points, depending on the cluster you choose, just to get a lingering effect. I'm not sure I like that. T t tainted fusings. When reintroducing tainted currency items, the, ch the chances for different outcomes were rebalanced to be appropriate for the, the core game. The new odds for tainted orbs of fusing made it hard to justify using one in your gear as it could become an expensive venture. We've changed the outcome odds for tainted orbs of fusing to be more favorable to match where they were. Holy fuck! Yes, please? Yes, daddy? Give me, give me. That's that's fine. I can actually spec into into beyond now. Cause it was somewhat easy, but we had a lot of fusings. But yeah, fracturing orb due to changes to exalted and divine orbs. Hey, RJP, how are you doing, buddy? I'm reading patch notes for the Poe Lee reveal, and then I'm gonna make a video on that and on other things as well but yeah how was your day due to changes to exalted and divine arbingers felt relatively unrewarding to farm you betcha as exalted shards presented a significant portion of the value from the rewards we've introduced fracturing orbs and shards that's great cyrus's arena it's hard to tell where the edge of cyrus arena i'm always getting a fucking phone call when i'm busy I'm just going to shove my phone somewhere else. You woke up late. I mean, you need your sleep. Sorry about that, by the way. It's always when I stream or I always get called and that ir irritates me, but oh well. Cyrus's Arena. It's hard to tell where the edge of Cyrus Arena is when envir environmental decorations are visually de -atomized. We've changed these visuals so you can still tell where the edge of the arena is after a de storm has passed over the decorations. Really? Was that was it really the only problem with this fight? Oh well. Corrosive hunger. Wading through ooze of, in the infinite hunger fight Subaria can be overly punishing if not using a movement skill. Reduce the rate at which player gains stacks of corrosive hunger in the infinite hunger boss fight. Yeah, but I'm not even sure at a hundred percent how to find a way. So it would be nice if it was clearer. I believe I know, but not even sure. Beast Theory Party Play. Beast Theory and Party Play currently awards the beast to every player when capturing beasts, causing Party Play to be the best way to capture specific rare beasts. Yeah. Additional captures of a beast when playing in a party are now rolled on a per player basis, with the chance being tied to the quantity bonus granted playing in a party. The owner of the instance is guaranteed to receive a captured beast. Okay, I don't play trades or crew, so I don't give a shit. Kirax Complete the Map Mission Kirax Complete the Map Mission is a bit too generous in the unique maps offered, with some of the more rare unique maps being offered more frequently than they should. Kirax giftiness for the maps offered from the, this mission has been reduced. The chances for him to offer a more rare unique map are now more reasonable. No! I need my Metamod crafts. Identified memory lanes. It was possible to use the Path of Exile trade website to determine the modifiers on unidentified Atlas memories. Oh. They now drop identified. Sure. Rogue markers. 
Upon leaving town in Act 6 and killing your first set of monsters, you'd very quickly obtain rogue markers and be told to go back to town to talk to Kurai. This disrupted the flow of the main quest line and you were then directed to do more and more things for the initial heist quest. We've removed the guaranteed drop rogue marker drop from Act 6. Who gives a crap? Alright. Monster Balance. Boiling ambushers found in Mabry has now cast Frostbite instead of early Weakness. The Bone Prison skill used by the Necropolis map boss now has a small gap run out through. Oh, that was true. Magnus Stone Thorns cast when damage taken. Molten Shell now requires more damage to be triggered. And now absorb more damage in Mabrias. Okay. The Kirak Leagues, Leagues Mob. Okay, we already know of them. Quest changes. Shield Crush is now offered to the Marauder for completing enemy at the gate. Volcanic Fissure. Okay. Curse of Ground Support is offered. Can be purchased by Clarissa. Okay. Multiple Totem Support is no longer offered at the Witch. Frozen Legion is now offered to the Templar. Hex Bloom. User Interface Changes. Added a display that details the effects of all Eldritch Altars that have been selected in the rear. Nice. Right-clicking on the Chronicle of Azoatl will show you the temple. That's amazing. Completed the Atlas Mission information text on the Atlas to clarify accumulated Atlas missions are based on the highest tier, okay? Hovering over a recipe that adds a specific modifier in the Beast Cherry. Displays a preview of the mod. Added slots for the newly introduced Fracturing Orb and Shard to the Currency Stash tab. League filter on the character selection screen now only lists leagues you have character in. The mini energy shield bar is now separate. Now possible to right click on the Divine Vessel to use it. I have a hard on just thinking about that. So great. Improve the scroll speeds in the Friends and Guild section of the social panel. And then a bunch of bug fixes.